reminds me a scan 30 years earlier, Meg said yes to my proposal. And she continues to be the love of my life. <laughs> while, preparing to, while, <laughs> while preparing to welcome Annie as our first daughter-in-law, and she does represent yes! <laughs> she represents a very significant 25% growth to our family. We have learned to treasure her and the Spofford clan. So we say welcome to the Spoffords. Yeah. 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 Little, because we got more to do. <laughs> and so we say, all is good. Celebrate this union. During the spring and summer, as tonight's event gained momentum, Meg and I spent many hours fondly recalling our rehearsal dinner, but sadly realizing that we could not completely remember the meal, <laughs> all the speeches, and only partially place the faces and names of the attendees. But what we do recall for a lifetime of commitment, and that's what it's all about for Annie and Billy. Similarly, our attendees at tonight's event share the same, providing a solid kick out of the nest for these young love birds. You, it's not a rope down, but <laughs> So then, well, <laughs> so while preparing this welcome and endorsement, I happened upon a friend's comments about marriage. His father-in-law had a nuptial saying, I do means I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. We used to laugh about it because that is what marriage is all about, I do. To this day, my life partner, my wife and I, keep doing all the time. It's a simple phrase that most people think at a wedding means a short answer to a quick question at the altar. But actually, it is really much more than that. So Billy and Annie, it represents your commitment for life. Those two simple words describe what you are going to do and keep doing for each other forever. Cheers. 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 Everything I 
Daily, I met, may add, and for months as you got out of the car. You were always one to shy away from the spotlight. Then kindergarten came, and you began to spread your wings a little bit. You had a large circle of friends and continued your devotion to your brothers, especially Peter. Sorry, John. A 12-year-old didn't really have much interest in a six-year-old sister. <laughs> Um, you really considered Peter to be your best friend. An example of this was the day, pretty much around kindergarten, you started to ride your two-wheeler without training wheels for the first time. As you got off your bike, you burst into tears. Of course, I did too. Not because you were excited or anything else, but you were sad that Peter wasn't ready to ride his bike with you. Um, and same thing happened when you got your frog at Martin's Dam. We had a couple tears because Peter wasn't ready to do the same thing. Um, and you both survived. And Peter and John have always been your biggest cheerleaders, except for mom and dad, of course, even to this day. When you were seven, you discovered your love of swimming and you spread your wings even more. Always involved in swimming and sports of all kinds, High school came and you began to soar. Academics, swimming, sports, and friends. Coaching for Special Olympics, an exchange program in Australia, and on and on. I knew when you were entered Vanderbilt that you were ready to be set free. You obtained a whole slew of awesome friends that are here celebrating with us today and this weekend. Although Billy didn't enter the picture until the fall of 2012, that's correct, <laughs> I feel like you, Bill, have been a part of our family since the day we met. I am so glad that you will be on Annie's journey as she continues to spread her wings. I am one lucky lady. I have Annie and Rose as daughters, John, Peter, and now Billy as my sons. Almost Billy. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I also have John, Meg, and Johnny as new family members, and more importantly, friends. Along with that, the Ripley and Winfrey families. Lucky lady I am. Anyway, I would like to toast to Annie and Billy and wish them a lifetime of love, happiness, health, and good fortune. To my sweet little Annie and her awesome soon to be husband Billy, and of course Gus too. So, uh, first up, this is definitely by a uh, random order, certainly, certainly not by amount contributed, because otherwise Ian Kobrick would definitely not be on <laughs> Wow! Uh, but uh, I want to say a quick word uh, about Ian. Um, I, I loved that, so Ian, I guess, for those of you who don't know, he was my freshman year roommate, randomly assigned, and um, I remember the, the trepidation you have going into your freshman year of college with a randomly assigned roommate, you really just don't know what to expect. And uh, initial impressions were that I really, I had no idea how this was going to work out. I didn't know how it was going to work out. I, I certainly didn't like it. <laughs> But uh, it, uh, it's been a, a pretty fantastic friendship in many ways, and um, I think that uh, when, I, when I called Ian to tell him that I was getting married and that I wanted him to be in my, in my, in my wedding party here, um, I think that his, his reaction kind of said it all, because uh, the way that Ian gets when he gets really excited is that I can really picture him. Sort of, sort of just like this. And I can tell him at the phone that he was sort of like, Yo, yeah! It's like, all right, good, 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 man. I'm excited too. I'm excited too. And uh, so, so Ian, thanks for being a fantastic friend. You've definitely introduced me to a lot of stuff that I, I wouldn't have figured out about otherwise. Uh, <laughs> Being uh, one of my great friends again, so I appreciate it, man. Hey, thanks for showing up. <laughs> <laughs> like, not too tight, Ian. Yeah, you know, no, no. <laughs> okay, Billy promised me he wasn't gonna talk too long because I'm not a good public speaker. Um, but this is for Rachel. She is one of the most loyal friends that you'll ever have. And I lived with her my first year back in Nashville when I met Billy. Um, and I'm very thankful for that. But I'm I can't speak that well. <laughs> So uh, this next one goes to uh, arguably, and I don't know, the debate might be settled later tonight, but arguably uh, my oldest friend here. Um, so I say arguably because I honestly can't tell you whether I've known Sean or Josh longer, but this one, uh, this one goes out to Mr. Durgan. Uh, back left there. Um, so Sean and I uh, first met because Sean ended up on uh, one of the, the Dover youth hockey teams with Johnny. And before I knew it, I pretty much had another big brother. And by had another big brother, I mean I had another person around the house who was big enough to beat the hell out of me whenever he felt like it. Uh, yeah, so I'm really, really grateful for that. I'm really grateful for that. Um, but other than some of those painful experiences, uh, and it's funny that I've had back problems because uh, Josh actually has some back problems as well, which may or may not Triple H. definitely be related to Sean Durkin. So when we talk about where my back problems came from, it's fairly likely uh, culprit. Um, but uh, in addition to, to those painful experiences, uh, Sean has been 
the epitome of, of Big Brother in many ways. And um, when I when I think about home, uh, it is very difficult to think about home without Sean Durgan. And um, I'm just so honored that you're here for me, man. And uh, yeah, come on. Yeah. 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 That's my adopted son right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, oh yeah, and her grandson. <laughs> Okay, he's hard to follow. Just put that up there. Um, no, it's just the beginning. But this is for Miss Kristen Godfrey. She's the sassy ninja sitting right there. Uh, <laughs> I'll admit, I was scared of Kristen. <laughs> but I'm so very thankful we became good friends junior year. Um, she's been one of the people that challenged me the most, but she's also made me grow the most as a person. And for that, I'm forever thankful. All but right. But I did want to take a moment to say a um, quick word. Uh, some of y'all would probably have noticed that there's an unequal number of groomsmen and bridesmaids present mm -hmm. tonight. And the reason for that is that my cousin Hunter White uh, is currently serving overseas uh, in the Middle East. And so um, you guys will see a couple of things tomorrow uh, that will hopefully remind you in a, in a funny way and not a creepy way of him. <laughs> uh, but I did want to say a quick word. Uh, roll Tide, I guess. Uh, yeah, can it soak it up. And, uh, because Hunter absolutely was was uh, kind of an automatic uh, pick pick for this um, in in many ways, and um, we, we certainly miss him. And um, I just wanted to make sure we took a moment to kind of kind of think of him. So, uh, Ryan, raise your glass. Cheers to safety and um, yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Alright, this is for Ms. Lauren Pino. My freshman year random roommate, so I think it's funny that both of our random roommates yep. are here in this room today. When I first met Lauren, I knew that I liked her automatically. That's stayed the same for the past eight years, which is crazy that it's been eight years. She is one of the most caring and thoughtful friends that you could have ever asked for. You can ask any of the other girls in this room. We are all so lucky to have her, and I love you. Thank you. Aww. Aww. I keep getting a pick. <laughs> All right, uh, so this, this next one goes out to um, uh, the other of my oldest friends uh, here. I guess I would say Mr. Joshua Smith over there. Uh, by the way, Kate, you look gorgeous. You're wonderful. Uh, but uh, yeah, Josh, it's funny. Uh, Josh very much was Johnny's Johnny's friend um, kind of right off right off the bat. Uh, while I was riding horses uh, and hanging with his mom and his sister, frankly. Hot sister. <laughs> Oh, Johnny, we're off cheese. A lot of time. Why not? <laughs> but uh, I think what what really um, made things made me forever grateful to Josh was the summer that we spent at Teton Valley Ranch Camp in Wyoming. Um, when I, I used to get, I went to summer camp. I went to boarding school. I was away from home a lot, but I used to get homesick like crazy every single summer. And yet, I think the the summer that was the turning point where I realized that homesickness was really just a, a, a passing thing was when I went with Josh, um, I think I was probably 12 or 13 years old, and uh, I was just so pumped to have my friend, my big brother, there with me. And uh, I did things that summer that I had never done before, as far as kind of achievements and enjoyment goes. Like read the whole Harry summer. Potter book? Or? And, uh, 
<laughs> and uh, I, I think that, um, yeah, it's, it's tough to, to, to say exactly what he brings as a, as a big brother, but um, when you talk about what you expect from your friends, what you hope your friends are going to bring to you, you talk about support, you talk about uh, love, you talk about just warmth, and um, I just couldn't ask for anything, anything better. So Josh, thanks man for being here. students sit through a, a day of class in one, they literally attend, and Jordan sat in my English class. <laughs> and at the time, his hair was much longer, such that it was like this sort of like fro-y, like, kind of, I don't know what to call it. Uh, and he was there, and every single one of us, I remember we kind of looked at each other after class, we were just sort of like, oh, I hope that kid doesn't get in, that's going to be rough. And uh, so... So obviously that was my first impression. I can't really say that it changed next year either. <laughs> it started attending. But then junior year we ended up playing on uh, on a soccer team together. And I was the strangest thing. Um, he was this kid that no matter how many times he got knocked down or no matter how many times he may have fallen short in one area or another, every single time he picked himself up, he brushed himself off, and he talked about what he learned from the experience and how next time, next time, <laughs> was going to be his time. And there was something about that that I, I just absolutely respected to my core. And I knew that I, this was a, a friend of mine that I wanted to stay close with for my entire life. And he is somebody that uh, I'm not always the best about reaching out to. But when you talk about great friends, a lot of times, um, they don't make you do all the work as far as the relationship goes. And I just couldn't be more grateful. This is my friend who I just road tripped about 40 hours with total this summer. And uh, I'm still thrilled to see him. Uh, <laughs> so, Dudley, get up here. Uh, I love Sam. As you well can tell, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's road All right, Miss Berger. Uh oh. Uh -oh. You the infamous Vanderbilt cheerleader that I'm sure you've heard Peter talk about. She is also probably one of the most fun people that I know. Um, 
when I first called her and told her that we got engaged, <laughs> she called me back hysterically crying. <laughs> and then we hung up and I thought everything was, she was so happy. Um, I thought everything was okay. She calls me back about three minutes later, still hysterically crying. <laughs> she was just so excited. She, her energy is contagious and, and bright, and I know that I was lucky enough freshman year to be matched up with Lauren, but to have you next door and with me for all four years, and now these four after college. As a real friend, someone that's always been there for me, and someone that makes me feel better when I'm down, and knows how to pick you right back up. So, thanks, Matt. And she's beautiful, and, and she's, she's a favorite of Peter's. <laughs> So next up, we have uh, my, my former roommate from multiple uh, periods of life, uh, Mr. Kevin Ranovix. So, um, man, it's interesting. We've, 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 yeah, we've done a lot of living together. We've, uh, uh, yeah, forget the language here, but we've seen some shit. <laughs> so, um, and it's funny, I, I say that, and then immediately what my mind goes to is a lot of the movies that we watch, and realistically, most people would really classify most of the movies we watch as just that. Absolute. <laughs> not the highest, not the highest. Um, and, and yet, Kevin is, is one of my favorite people to digest, uh, frankly, some, some tough life experiences with, um, but, but also the highs as well. Um, I think that what he has taught me more about than anybody else in this room is about how to, uh, frankly, just, just love the day and just make the most of the moment. Um, so whether that be your, um, your, your floating camouflage uh, uh, sunglass, uh, one of my croquis, uh, or a, a beer koozie that hangs around your neck so you don't even have to hold it. Um, it's a bit, of a, a bit of a connoisseur of, of relaxing. So um, Kevin, thanks so much for being here. Um, love you. Yeah. And he's so good looking. Okay, this one is for Anne, the lady in the pink dress. Um, first of all, I'm glad you're here. Yeah. And for anyone who didn't know, Anne had some airport troubles today, so we're just thankful that she made it tonight. Um, she, Anne, is my best friend in Nashville. She, we became friends senior year of college when we both lived in the house together, high fi house, and we both took maybe two classes. So we had a lot of house time and doing whatever time. Kristen can attest to it. She was there too. Um, but I knew that year that Anne was someone that was the real deal when it came to friends. And she's proven that to me time and time again these past four years, um, especially this year in Nashville. I think all this wedding process, I don't think I would have been able to go through it all without having her there with me. Um, I'm so happy to have you here and for you to sing by my side tomorrow. So I love you. Thank you. Alright, 
right, so next up, I guess I realized I misspoke earlier when I talked about my oldest friend in the room. Um, because the absolute oldest friend, of course, would be my brother Johnny. And, uh, oh, this is a little bit surprising. I didn't expect it. Um, Remember, he shoots at turkeys. Yeah, come on, Bill. You know? All right. All right. All right. Simmer down, simmer down. Uh, so, obviously, yeah, the, uh, the, oldest, the oldest friend I've got. Um, also the oldest tormentor I've got. Uh, there are hatchet uh, marks um, in your bedroom door. When I, when I, it's funny because uh, outside of being uh, just a constant source of advice and uh, perspective and torment, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's amazing because when uh, There's a drink. Right, yeah. Bro, yeah. watch it. Come on, Bill. Roll tight. Can I go? Can I go? Tom Brady's innocent. That's a real test. So, uh, when you go through trying periods in life, I think I'm dead. When you go through trying periods in life, I think that that's when you find out kind of what your metal is. And Every single uh, trying period that I've gone through, I end up thinking about shit. Why am I going to put me? <laughs> <laughs> realize that whatever I'm going through now, and I am so grateful for having an older brother that pushed me and challenged me and loved me and supported me the way that he has. And uh, um, yeah, I just. It was an easy discussion about it. It was going to be best for him. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sums it up for Rose. It was uh, probably about like 3 ish a.m. in uh, the Outer Banks, North Carolina, last summer. And I was, we were sitting there. and. Uh, I may or may not have pretty much been 100% sure that I was going to ask Annie to marry me. And I was sort of asking Rose for a bit of the lowdown scoop. <laughs> and she provided it. <laughs> I very much appreciated it. <laughs> she delivered it in a way that uh, realistically, I think her perspective, the way that she sees things, um, I don't think you'll find many, many uh, brighter folks out there. Um, but the way that she sees it through this lens of love and understanding and patience, it's absolutely amazing, and um, I know that for for me at least, when I think about me and my partnership, and I think about what Rose and Johnny have, and what Rose gives to it, um, obviously we neither of us have the gaming skills that y'all have, but um, <laughs> we can take the patience that, that you show on a daily basis, and, and we, we love you guys big time. So Rose, yeah, come on, we come on up. You. Yeah, we love you. We're so grateful. Uh, Let's thank them by finishing all of our glasses <laughs> <laughs> and then racking up a bar bill. <laughs> <laughs> Channing, and yes, this weekend has been wonderful. We're happy to celebrate Annie and Billy. And this is Anne. <laughs> I'm Anne, and I'm very happy to be here. And I um, live in Nashville with Annie and Billy. So um, we've all pretty much known her. We most of us went to college with her, so for about eight years, I guess. 
Yeah, I'm around eight years. Yeah, a little less for me. I met her junior year. Yeah, we're just happy to be here to celebrate and be a part of their special day. That's Congratulations, Danny yeah. and Billy. We love you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am Annie's oldest friend. I'm, I knew her when she was eight. And we swam together. I love her. <laughs> I bet you like Billy. Like, as cute as a eight year old can be. Little grace, and she'll cover him for a week or so. It does. That would be a problem. Can you imagine if it went off? Mm hmm. I can. That would be something. Lessen the harshness yeah. of it. We will not have eyebrows as professional fighters. Okay, then yes. Your mom cracked me up. She placed it every time. She just rested on it. So good. Rachel, you're next. I know. <laughs> you're both like, what? Huh? Me? Rachel? Uh -uh. Oh, yeah. So, my mom gave it to me. She was going to wait until I turned 25. She gave it to me quite a bit early, earlier than that. It was after I took the MCAT. And I remember her coming up to Nashville. We were in a hotel room because I was also moving. And just so busy with the MCAT. And it was like actually not a fun experience. Um, and she comes over to me and I'm down and she's like, which I hope. Why? Why? Yeah, what happened? Yeah, and she just like but takes it off her fingers. She's like, I was gonna wait till you turn 25, mm -hmm. but I want to give this to you. Mm -hmm. and she's like, I'm so proud of you. I was like, love the song. days of But she actually got it in Thailand when I was in fifth grade. I, don't know, I remember her going on this trip. Like, yeah, we didn't well, have a lot of money growing up, and she was a single mom. She worked really hard. She took a child who was a It's genetics. I love traveling. She was my sister. 
but she like saved up and took this trip for herself. Um, which like at the time I think I just remember going to Thailand and being really like, like, you know, like, like but looking back I'm like that's so scary. I'm like she worked hard and she bought this ring over there. Um, very nice ring. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
is it by <laughs> my marriage? <I> know. <laughs> just being awesome. Well, yeah. 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 So Jordan told me, I guess, how they found out. And Jordan I was like, survived. oh goodness. How did they find out? Billy was a little intoxicated and had a conversation with John and I guess spilled it accidentally. Which is fine. I'm totally fine with I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm not surprised by that. How many months pregnant are you? I want to show you the back before I kind of finish the part. So, about four months. Yeah. Four months? About ten. Okay. People start finding out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's beautiful. It's really exciting a little bit. Other side. Not pretty. Yeah. It looks awesome. So, I think if we, get, if we get some flowers, whatever side of your face, like when you're getting married, I'll be standing there. This is where the. Okay. Is it like baby's breath? Like a little baby? Yeah. Like yeah. Little yeah. Cool. Yeah, yesterday at the rehearsal, the grooms and all went on to the wrong side. Like, they're all just standing on the I was like, yeah. <laughs> this is a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen a movie? Like, like, no? I was going to say, like, anything. Yeah. I haven't even, like, been to it. Just, like, yeah, any like, movie where something like, like, it's seen like seen a wedding. Right. Ever. Like, ever. <laughs> in any form. I don't think about that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you feel secure? Like, just secure. Cool. I feel safe and secure. <laughs> and you're... We had to. We had everybody right walking with um, a whole different person, and then we just shifted all. And Hunter wasn't going to be here. Oh yeah. We were going to put Kristen and Hunter together. So the gingers. Yeah. Yeah. The ginger people. The ginger people. You in? Yeah. It sounds like an affliction. Yeah. Sorry. Like a little struggle. What is in the water? Uh, Tom, so it's peppermint and tea tree. Tea tree oil. That would help with your scalp, but that kind of water. It feels good and it smells oh, good. Okay. So. Cool. I know, but you're okay. So, if we want to do the final reveal and stuff, that's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just take my reveal. I'll take my reveal. I'll take my reveal. Yeah. I have a nice. Like, no I think everybody needs a nap. <laughs> 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 Everyone, look. Am I in it? Yeah. <laughs> Anne, look. I'm not in it. Wait, Anne's going to need to do this because she's taller. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Yeah, stand up. So what do I do? Press the button. Just I'm press. I never use yeah. this off yeah. I hadn't either. <laughs> yeah, you may.
suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them, and whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place of flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the bread he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be more properly, for she was taken out of the man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and then he comes. This is my 
you are pledging to continue to love one another through the promises and covenant that you make through this sacrament of marriage. And about marriage, it is thus that um, the great theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer once said that it's not love that sustains marriage, but marriage that sustains love. It's not love that sustains marriage, but marriage that sustains love. And married persons here know what Bonhoeffer means because when a marriage is nurtured with time and prayers and faithfulness to the breadth and depth of its wedding vows, love becomes ever richer and ever deeper. And the ability to know that you are married each other to stay before God and with the support and witness of your family and friends because you love one another. But by the grace of God, you will continue to love one another in the years to come because you are married. One of my favorite comments about marriage that relates to this truth is from my own pastor in the Disciples of Christ tradition. She says, the covenant of marriage, or the promises that you made to each other and to God today, will give your love the muscle it needs to persist, to forgive, and actually live faithfully together in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health. The ups and downs of life will happen. But the covenant that you make and choose to keep is so very, very important. This covenant and the promises that you make will give you the grace to live with continued grace and to live with joy and love. And who or what else will give you that grace? Well, you know God will always do that. And that's one of the reasons you are choosing to have your marriage blessed in this place, in this church. But also look around. And I ask you to actually take a moment to do that. <laughs> because all of these people are here in one place. And these are the people who love and support you. These are the people who, when they were asked just a few moments ago, if they witnessing these promises will do it all do all in their power to uphold you in your marriage, said we will. These are the people to whom you can always trust for support, friendship, love, and care. And so because they are here with you, you aren't the only ones being blessed. All of us are blessed because we gather and celebrate with you. When we as Christians gather, especially for sacraments like marriage, the love and the joy and the commitment and celebration pours out on all of us. And so as God blesses you this day, we and all those around you are blessed as well. So as you make these promises of Christian marriage, may God bless you well. May your marriage give you the grace to love and forgive and faithfully, and may all of you be rich in love and peace and joy. Amen.